I always got to try to remember to make video on these types of vehicles because there's more than one of them now on more several years a couple different <laughs> models so we have a front end end collision we could see it right there and we can see where this is smashed back and it even crushed the radiator behind it for the engine and you guys will go okay so we have uh what looks to be a transmission cooler down at the bottom we have a radiator behind and we have the classic looks like it's a condenser right here i'm called out to do a refrigerant recovery everything is good right well and if you went to look for leaks you can leak check all day long with your electronic leak detector you can use nitrogen you can use bubbles you could try to use dye to figure out why you were losing refrigerant if there was refrigerant leak to the cows come home and you're blue in the face because that is not a condenser that is a glycol loop heat exchanger there is no refrigerant up front in this car there is no standard everyday run-in-the-mill condenser there's only a liquid glycol plate heat exchanger and this will really hurt you guys on diagnosis when you come to figure trying to figure out why am i getting uh, 430 psi and my compressor shuts off in 10 seconds or 30 seconds so let's see if i could zoom in here let me get it really steady for you let me focus there we go it, oh first shot apple thank you you actually focused on what i want do you see those little flat lines that is a plate heat exchanger this is the high side connector right off of it now let me see if i could shift the camera a little bit over and can i see it mm, yeah okay do you see that hex nut down there that star right below and behind it is a receiver dryer let's see if i can come over here and get it a little better why can i not see the same thing with my eyes ah there we go you could see the rounded part you see the rounded part down there let me zoom in boom right there you see that round that is the receiver dryer now let's see if i could see there you go right there do you see the pin wire connector spring wire clamp and do you see the glycol the coolant hose let me see if i could get my finger down there not this one that silver band back there you see how that's going into the plate heat exchanger and can i get you you could see some refrigerant lines right you see that little bendy line right there that 180 degree that's refrigerant and it appears i will not be able to get you a view of the expansion valve but trust me there's an expansion valve on that assembly too it's a whole assembly plate heat exchanger receiver dryer and an expansion valve all in one assembly and it comes directly out of the compressor let's see can i see the that pipe right you see that nut right there you see that pipe right there that is the hot gas discharge off of the compressor it's only a few inches of line down there right off the back of the compressor boom right into the liquid plate heat exchanger that has glycol pumping through it through with an electric pump so there's glycol going through in one direction through the expansion valve and the receiver dryer you have the hot discharge gas going into the plate heat exchanger then going down the plates as you could see they're in a vertical position so the after going through the receiver dryer you now have a liquid because it went through the plate heat exchanger it comes out the bottom as almost a liquid it fills up the receiver dryer it pulls the liquid off the bottom it flips back around with a hose it goes back down in to a block h style expansion valve and injects cold refrigerant i shouldn't say that uh not technically a collect for the physics minded kind of guys into the plate heat exchanger and it goes up in between these plates so every finger is a plate of me metal and in between is the hollow gaps so we're going to say in between these two fingers there's cold refrigerant flowing in between these two fingers there's hot glycol flowing then we have cold refrigerant and then we have glycol again and it just keeps repeating that plate sequence 
and they exchange the heat out of the hot glycol goes to this heat exchanger up here in the front and the hot glycol comes here it passes it rejects its heat comes to the other side it's now cooler just like an engine and it goes back to complete the loop of glycol over and over again all the condensers right here now you could do this exact same thing up in the evaporator you can make another one and it actually can go right here or it could go over there wherever you want to do it you can actually do the exact same thing right off the compressor with another plate heat exchanger and you can chill glycol and you can pump let's pretend these two equal size see these two tubes right here let's pretend those well they are glycol but for uh, for heating uh let's pretend this is chilled water now now you could take this chilled water and you could pump it into the evaporator inside the compartment and the water could be 27 degrees fahrenheit 24 degrees fahrenheit depending on what your outcome you go oh, that's below freezing it'll freeze no it won't but i'm not going to get into the physics behind that um so you could pump that chilled water into the evaporator and cool the cabin off with water and you would never have refrigerant inside the passenger compartment you would never have refrigerant inside a condenser because there is no condenser because it's now a heat exchanger that is liquid glycol now we could take that one step further by reducing all that refrigerant that's not needed in those lines it's not needed in these lines and it's not needed in an evaporator inside there we can reduce the quantity of refrigerant let's take that one step further because propane is so much more efficient than regular refrigerant you would not need this 580 grams if it was all in one module really combined and condensed you might need 250 grams well what's 250 grams of say propane or you just got a couple out 28.5 grams per ounce and it could be even made lower than that depending on how much money they want to spend on efficiency on the type of plate heat exchangers you can have all the propane right here in a little tiny module and all your shipping into the engine compartment and through into the passenger would be chilled glycol chilled glycol now look at tesla's octo module that octo plate octo valve and look at that little mini ac heat pump system that they have that's basically kind of almost what they did by eliminating all the piping you see in all these ridiculous cars with heat pumps tesla has almost eliminated all that mess now you can take that and you have that octo valve out here you have everything right here you could even put it to the front of your car even if you had a front end collision and you were to rupture one of the propane lines or something like that the amount of propane that would come out so fast and flame up since everything under here is almost burn proof it's, it takes a lot it takes a duration of time to actually catch these on fire the propane would have snuffed itself out before it could actually catch anything on fire. End of story, that's it. There's no reason to be using chemical refrigerants. We can go to propane butane mixes. All right, that's all I gotta say about that. See you guys later, plate heat exchangers. Get to know them, because they're gonna cause you some diagnostic uh, headaches in the future um, when coolant flow stops flowing.